My dear friends, in today's video we have some really exciting Star Wars news. We're going to start with a big update for the Andor series and then we're going to be speaking about horror within Star Wars. Before we dive into it though my dear friends, please be sure to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted every single time that I post a new video. So as we like to say in this community without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So we begin with an update for the Andor series. In their latest podcast, Making Star Wars have revealed that Andy Serkis is going to be involved in the show. Now with all rumours, there's always a chance that something changed during production, and with all of the roadblocks and delays that Andor faced, we don't know if this rumour is 100% valid, but it is a big report that has popped up, so let's talk about it. Andy Serkis is no stranger to Star Wars. He famously played the role of Supreme Leader Snoke in the sequels, which has gotten a lot of fans confused as to why he'd be in the Andor series, which takes place many years before the creation of Snoke. Now while it is possible that Serkis was hired to have a more behind the scenes role, for example directing an episode, I think it's very worth speculating on why he might be involved if he was cast to play an acting role. Since we know Palpatine's contingency plan began way before the original trilogy, maybe Circus has been hired to play a sort of proto-Snoke, a clone project devised by the Emperor that would later be the template for the Supreme Leader of the First Order. Now as I said, Palpatine is very much still alive at this point, but is working with monstrosities of experiments. Lucasfilm have been putting a lot into expanding Palpatine's early plans, which began during the late prequel era after the fall of the Republic. They could very easily include some of this in the Andor series, and as we know the Bad Batch Season 2 is also going to connect to early cloning projects on Mount Tantis. There could very much be some overlap with the prequel era series, and I call Andor a prequel series because it technically is. The Andor series is set five years before the events of Rogue One slash A New Hope, so it very much qualifies as a late prequel series. And remember guys that there are many rumours that point towards a return to Coruscant, some unexpected cameos and flashbacks, and even one report that claimed that Obi-Wan was going to appear in Andor as well as his own series. So much like The Mandalorian and its spin-offs, or as we like to call it, The Mandalorian Universe, there could be a story overlap with the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and Andor. And since we are getting Mount Tantis in The Bad Batch Season 2, as was teased in the Season 1 finale, that could come into live action as well. And I would be over the moon and absolutely pumped to see what kind of monstrosities and Sith experiments were taking place on Wayland. So I would not be too surprised if Circus has been cast as an early experiment that resembles Snoke. As I say though, he might have a directing role instead. Personally, I've not heard anything of Andy Circus being involved, but then again, so much is being kept under wraps. And we're bound to be in for a few surprises that were kept very much a secret. Now an aspect of the Andor series which I think a lot of fans are going to appreciate is the world building. We've seen official casting for new characters, new species, and I'm sure we're going to be introduced to some new planets as well. I love the world building that was done in Rogue One, and with a 12 episode long series, they're going to be able to expand upon that in a significant way. And another reason I'm super hyped for Andor is that it's undoubtedly going to bring something new to the table. While I'm all about the cameos and big surprises, the invigorating thing about Andor is that it's a spy thriller. A new flavour of Star Wars content, and the more I think about it, the more I realise how well the marriage of spy thriller and space opera as genres could work together. Lucasfilm has hit a sweet spot between a genre that normally does really well on streaming services and combining it with Star Wars. And you can't deny that Cassian Andor is an incredibly awesome character who suits the style so well. So I'm really pumped for what kind of story the show is going to tell and what it's going to bring to the Star Wars universe. While the excitement has been lower for Andor than other series like The Mandalorian and Obi-Wan Kenobi, it's going to surprise a lot of fans and I can see it being a hit that nobody saw coming. A lot of people expect it to be a boring Rogue One spin-off, but I think it's going to be full of surprises. A Trojan horse, as I like to say. A series that appears as one thing, but ends up being something completely different and mind-blowing. Apart from new characters, we can count on very key characters being back for the show. Krennic, Mon Mothma, Saw Gerrera, and hopefully Bail Organa. So the series is going to be a refreshing combination of the old mixed in with the new. So speaking of trying out new genres in the Star Wars universe, now my dear Megalorians, we're going to move on and talk about Mike Flanagan, who says he wants to direct a Star Wars horror movie. So let's get spooky and talk about it. By the way, we're very close to Halloween, so this story is very fitting. 
Now, when it comes to horror, I've always believed it would work so well in a galaxy far, far away. And while we're getting a Sith-oriented show, The Acolytes by Leslie Headland, there's no guaranteeing it's going to be a horror. When I think of horror mixed in with Star Wars, I think of the spooky opening sequence on Exegol in The Rise of Skywalker. It made me realise just how well horror would work in a Star Wars movie. And while by no means am I a fan of Episode 9, all I'm saying is that the opening scene had so much potential. Whether it's a movie or series based on Exegol or Korriban, the combination of dark side elements with common tropes you would find in horror could work really well, especially in a time where horror movies are very lacklustre. It seems like every single Hollywood horror film these days is unbelievably predictable. The overuse of jump scares and the lazy writing have really turned me off the genre. Having said that, there have been some very well written slow burn horror films like Hereditary and Art but those are the exceptions. But when combined with Star Wars, I think it could revolutionise not only a new way to tell Star Wars stories, but also introduce brand new elements to the horror genre that have not been tried before. So going back to this article, Mike Flanagan says he wants to create one. So this is from Screen Crush and they say the following. You know what they say, earthquakes are the mother of invention, or at least they are for horror maven Mike Flanagan. He tweeted, got woken up by the earthquake this morning, sat there for a few minutes just thinking, I'd really love to make a horror movie in the Star Wars universe. Flanagan's distinguished himself in recent years as one of the most reliable horror directors in film and television. And he's not just interested in his own material either. He's made a wager prequel and several films adapted from Stephen King novels, including the excellent Gerald's Game for Netflix and the underrated Shining sequel, Doctor Sleep. And as this article says, he does deserve a lot of praise and I do think he could tackle a Star Wars movie, especially in the horror genre. But what do you guys think? Do you think we should get a Star Wars horror movie someday? And what do you make about the Star Wars and or news. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Show me some love with a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if this video wasn't for you, go check out the rest of my videos. A lot of people see these news updates and think that's all I do here on the channel, but there is so much more. I do Star Wars lore videos, Star Wars theories, episode breakdowns of every new show, and everything has been conveniently organized in playlists. So go wild and enjoy. Just yesterday, I made a video on how Boba Fett reacted when he found out that Mace Windu supposedly died. And the reason I say supposedly is I don't think he is dead. But go check out that video, I'm sure you'll love it. But otherwise, my dear friends, have an amazing day no matter where you are in the galaxy. The link to my Patreon is down there in the description. But otherwise, may the force be with you and I'll see you tomorrow.